Okay, hello. Uh, we're now going to look at uh, questions from uh, the uh, June 2009 BY1 paper. All right, so uh, let's scroll down now to uh, question number one. Okay, uh, this is a question um, about plant and animal cells. Okay, uh, you have a table there um, where you have to uh, place a cross uh, or a tick um, to indicate whether the plant or the animal cell has those three organelles. The organelles are the centrioles, the mitochondria and the uh, chloroplasts. Okay. Now, um, it's worth two marks, but what I want to emphasize is that uh, some people um, tend to ignore what the examiner is telling them to do with these um, uh, table questions. In this question, the examiner wants a tick and a cross um, in each of the box. Now, if you only decide to put ticks in the boxes and leave the other box empty and don't put a cross, uh, you won't get any marks at all. Okay, you have to put a tick or a cross in each of the box uh, as you feel appropriate. Okay. Um, what I'm going to use is uh, is an oblique sign, a little slash sign for the tick, uh, and I'll just use an X there for the cross. Okay. Um, so let's take uh, the plant cells uh, first and work our way down this this plant cell uh, column. Um, centrioles then. Um, Plant cells don't uh, have centrioles, okay, uh, so we can actually put a, a, a cross in there, okay. Uh, plant cells uh, do have mitochondria. Again, some people get a little bit confused with this and, and they think plant cells don't have mitochondria. They do, um, as of course animal cells do. Okay, so uh, the last one, obviously plant cells have uh, chloroplasts in there. Okay, uh, animal cells then they do have uh, centrioles, so that's a tick, and uh, they certainly have mitochondria, but they do not contain chloroplasts. Okay, so for example, now if I didn't put a cross uh, in that last box there uh, for the uh, my, for the chloroplast, I would actually lose the whole mark for that animal column. Okay, you get a mark for each uh, column. Okay, so if I fail to put in the cross there, I would actually lose a mark. Okay, so you have to have your cross in uh, there. Okay, right, uh, nice, easy, gentle start. As always, the first few questions are relatively straightforward. Okay, then let's move on to part B. Um, this is a question now worth three marks, and uh, it's uh, uh, requiring you to draw um, a diagram and label it. Okay, the examiner has highlighted and labeled there in bold. Okay, you need to draw a, a section through a typical uh, mitochondrion. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is I've, uh, I've drawn uh, a mitochondria and uh, I've scanned it in. So I'm just going to pull up uh, the picture there of uh, a typical diagram of a mitochondrion. Okay. Now I hope you can see that okay. Um, I've drawn the sausage-shaped mitochondria, which is generally the shape of mitochondria, but they're not all that shape. Um, I've labelled it. Now, according to the mark scheme, you uh, only have to make two labellings um, on this diagram, but it doesn't state that in the question. Okay, so you must label as much as you possibly can. It's just good uh, exam technique. All right, so I've drawn uh, the inner mitochondrial uh, membrane uh, highly folded. I've labeled that the uh, Christa, okay, uh, which is the technical name uh, for the inner mitochondrial membrane. So the Christa is there. Okay, I've labelled the outer membrane. Okay, uh, the mitochondria is one of three organelles that have a double membrane, an outer and an inner one. Okay, the other two is the is the nucleus and the chloroplast. Okay, so I've labelled Christa outer membrane, and just for good measure, I've actually labelled there a double membrane, and I've I've drawn a circle, if you can see there, 
to uh, encompass the outer and inner membrane and then that signifies there's a double membrane there. Um, the uh, fluid part of the mitochondria is the matrix okay and uh, within the matrix uh, you do actually have DNA and ribosomes okay. Um, mitochondria is slightly unusual uh, in that it has its own DNA as indeed does the chloroplast okay so uh, mitochondria and chloroplasts have their own DNA if they have their own DNA then they must have ribosomes in order to carry out protein synthesis okay the DNA of course is the code um, for proteins and it's the ribosome is the location of protein synthesis okay a um, couple more labelings then I've labelled the intermembrane space that's the space between the outer and inner membranes okay and lastly they're the stalked particles they're the structures that are um, protruding from the surface of the Christi there okay um, so that's a typical diagram of the mitochondrion um, where with uh, with all its labelings uh, in place there right um, let's move on then to uh, part number two okay it's asking now what is the function of mitochondria in cells now a little tip here again um, the examiner is uh, extremely picky on what type of answers he will accept uh, for this okay um, he certainly won't accept uh, production of energy that's generally not accepted uh, what he will allow is ATP production okay or he will allow aerobic respiration uh, generally the examiner will not accept an answer to this type of question with just respiration the reason being is there are two types of respiration there's respiration that requires oxygen and there's respiration that doesn't require oxygen um, the type of respiration that occurs in mitochondria requires oxygen um, so the examiner would expect um, an answer of uh, aerobic uh, respiration or uh, ATP production okay so I've uh, I've decided just to write in there aerobic respiration right part uh, two uh, name a type of cell in which you would expect to find large numbers of mitochondria okay so really any cell that is undertaking uh, a great deal of activity whereby it needs lots of ATP okay so there are a number of typical cells that really are quite um, uh, metabolically active as we say they carry out lots of activities lots of chemical reactions uh, a typical example of that would be muscle cells okay muscle cells have to contract which requires a great deal of energy uh, liver cells are another good example the liver cells carry out um, thousands and thousands of reactions um, every minute uh, that requires a great deal of energy okay um, they would have allowed their sperm cells okay sperm cells have uh, a tail um, that uh, requires energy to propel the sperm okay um, you could also put in there th this perhaps a little bit less obvious now but neurons and neurons are uh, nerve cells they require uh, quite a lot of um, energy uh, so as long as you just keep in mind uh, a couple of examples of cells that require a lot of energy and therefore require a lot of mitochondria okay I've decided to just go for muscle cells uh, uh, for this example okay part uh, four the examiner then wants you to explain why the cell you have chosen contain large numbers of mitochondria okay so you need to be careful here this part four links back to your answer in part three you have to link why you chose muscle cells and give a reason or explain why they have large amounts of mitochondria okay so it's no good putting an answer in here that relates to a different cell you won't get the mark all right so why do muscle cells have a um, large number of mitochondria purely and simply uh, they have a high requirement for energy because they carry out contraction okay 
Okay, that's uh, that's the end really of uh, question one. Uh, quite a lot of marks for question one. Uh, the answers there pretty straightforward, I think. Again, basic recall, um, and you get yourself eight marks. As I've said previously, you need to be getting full marks um, in these first few questions at least. Okay.